everybody, my name is Chloe Ryan. I'm an artist, robotics engineer, creative technologist, and also the CEO and founder of Acrylic Robotics. I've been painting since I was a teenager, making and selling my artwork since the age of about 14, and I've experienced a lot of these problems firsthand. If you're an artist, you spend weeks or months making a piece, and then you have an option to sell it one time to one person only. Your only option is to sell it to high net worth individuals through galleries and auction houses, artificially restrict access to inflate prices. This is a market that does not work for most people. Most artists live below the poverty line, and for most buyers, fine art is still considered to be a luxury item. Two thirds of Americans have never bought a single work of art. In addition, we've all seen that the way that we make art is changing. In the past year, year and a half, Gen AI and digital art creation has swept the art industry. Now nearly 90% of artists use some form of digital or AI tool in their creation process. But even though the way that we make art has changed, the way that we buy and sell art really hasn't changed in you know, decades, if not centuries. There's still this crazy power law where only 10 of the world's top contemporary artists make up around 27% of global art sales. Artists still bought and sold through these archaic, opaque gallery systems and auction houses, and most people cannot access it. There's this cultural narrative that the average person doesn't appreciate art, and it's really a, you know, a rich person thing. All of the data, and I think a lot of people here would agree with me here, that it's not that most people can't, uh, don't want art, it's that most people can't afford art. 54% of people cite cost as the primary obstacle to them buying art. And if we look at how that works from a market dynamics standpoint, the mid-market, the underserved mid-market, what we consider low price art is absolutely exploding. Paintings and prints sub 5,000 grew over 78% year over year last year. I believe that in catering to the top 1% of buyers, artists, collectors, everyone is missing this massive opportunity and selling art to the 99%. Buyers like you, who've got blank walls, some disposable income, but you know, who can't go and afford $100,000 artworks from Sotheby's. So I asked myself, how do we make good art accessible to the general public? I believe that we've tried a few things, we've seen how those worked. I believe that art lives when it's seen, so primarily not a JPEG left to die in someone's downloads folder on a laptop. Also not flattened onto a low quality poster print like most wall decor. And definitely not hidden in, an, in a bunker somewhere in the Alps like most ingress, investment grade art meant to accrue value. At Acrylic Robotics, we're building the world's first way to bring gallery quality artwork into every home. For us, this is based on a simple yet fundamental belief that art should be valuable not just because it's rare, but because it's good. And so to us, that means making more good art. This is an example of an artwork by Matt Chesko, one of our partner artists. He sells the original for around 50,000. Most people here will probably never be able to afford that. And it takes him dozens of hours. Our robots can recreate it brush stroke by brush stroke nearly identically for sub $100 from a cost perspective. We've pioneered the world's first way to delicately reproduce hand-painted art artworks with texture at scale. This means mimicking all kinds of variables about how a human hand delicately paints on canvas. The pressure, the speed, the flick of the risk, the flick of the risk, the way that, paints, that paint moves across a canvas. In terms of how that actually materially works, We've built software and machine learning algorithms that can take any digital d illustration, so an artist painting on a tablet or an iPad, an image upload from someone like you, here's a photo of my dog, here's a photo of my kids, or a text prompt generated on a text image platform into a real painting made with real paint on canvas. We've got hundreds of top artists in line. We always require the artist's consent, unlike all text to image platforms today, and we always give them credit and, co and compensation whenever their style is used. Our art got so good that, I, that two months ago, the estate of Norval Morisot, Canada's most widely regarded indigenous artist and, and the victim of the world's largest art fraud, reached out to us to help combat art fraud of his works. Uh, I, you know, I ask people, that the answers get better and better every presentation I give, to distinguish which is the original and which is the fake. Uh, I'll leave that up to your, up to your imagination, but 
his, the executive director claims that our robot has done a better job than all of the fakes that have fooled all the institutions according to an AI model that they've built to, to, to combat the, his forgery. What this means for us in terms of building a new product category, we've coined these paintings aura graphs in that we can capture the aura of an art piece in the way that a flat photo print simply can ne never can. These are t a 10x product improvement over a photo print, more affordable than gallery art, and brought to life beyond a screen. I, I encourage everyone to take a second, scan the QR code. This is a collection that we're dropping just for Slush with a, a Helsinki-based artist named Yuka. Uh, who has built Karelian AI and an AI that self-supervises and that designs its own artwork. These pieces are for sale, and I'll be putting a QR code towards the end of the presentation uh, of an art that we're hosting an hour from now at his studio, only a 10-minute drive from here. A lot of people ask me, Chloe, <laughs> are you building the death of art? Is this going to be the death of art? The number one thing I say is that if you look at the headlines when the camera was first invented, so when photography came to be, everyone heralded this as the end of painting, the end of art. By and large, this has created a, a, an abundance of new markets that have compounded and, and given opportunities to many new artists. There's some really interesting studies that, was done, that were done at a leading museum that shows that the emotional reaction experienced by a viewer when they look at a painting versus a photo print, in this case, this was of the painting Girl with a Pearl Earring, is nearly 10 times stronger uh, than looking at a poster print. For us, this means that we can build an entirely new product category. That means disrupting old markets that have lain untouched for decades, specifically the photo print market. A lot of our early go-to-market strategy looks like selling to hotels. These hotels need hundreds or thousands of works. They're not currently buying from artists. And if we can say, hey, we'll match you on price and we'll give you a 10x better product, it's a very easy switch out. Other B2B and B2BC markets look like interior design, home furnishing, home staging, markets like this. Also B2B to C, so platforms that currently buy and sell hundreds and thousands of photo prints. We're about to go live on one of Wayfair's platforms next week. So it's going to be a busy week for me next week. And beyond just disrupting old markets, we see us as building out new markets, just like what photography did. It, invented, it allowed for the invention of cinema, and then Netflix, and short form video, in addition to photography as a new art category. My goal is to put a painting on all of your walls, in addition to on the walls of all of your corporate offices and in public spaces, and make the world a more beautiful place. Moving aside from, okay, that's a really cool idea, Hopefully you think it's a cool idea, I do. Looking at the, fundamental, the business fundamentals, we've got a much higher price ceiling than photo prints, which means that we can afford to offer artists a much higher commission than photo prints do. And it also means that we've got software like margins, even though there's hardware required to manufacture the product. At the lowest possible price point, we see 80% gross margins. When we can sell larger, larger price points, obviously that, that gets higher, that becomes higher. We've got the f one of the fastest robot paybacks I've ever seen, roughly 12 times higher than a typical robotics company. I like to joke that art is probably the most expensive thing that you could make with off-the-shelf robots. Team-wise, again, I'm an artist. I'm also a robotics engineer. We are a team of smart people. Our robots and our whole tech stack currently beats all published research across the field. We can sell. We dropped our first collection. We drove over 25,000 in revenue in the first hour alone. And we saw 10 million views across platforms. It went viral. And we're scrappy. We've built the technology, and we're already working in the past four or five months since we started to go live with some of these partners, with leaders worth over $100 million in direct revenue with the logos on the screen alone. So that looks like players like Wayfair, Sensaria, they do basically all print manufacturing across North America, uh, Gensler, the world's largest interior design firm, and other partners like this. I'm, raising, I'm currently raising a round uh, to unlock these partners and more, so if you're interested in that, I'd love if you reach out to me. And for all of the non-investors in the audience, this is the QR code. Take a second. I would love if you actually all pull out your phones. So, so take a second to pull out your phone. It's very cool. There was another one yesterday. Uh, he's got an, this underground art studio about 10 minutes from here with a whole bunch of his works. We'll, we're displaying a bunch of robot painted works where you can watch the, pro, the, the creation process live. Uh, so take a, take a scan. And uh, it's happening today from 4 to 10 PM with, uh, with Yuka, one of the artists that we're partnering with for Slush. That's, that's me. My name's Chloe Ryan again. The company is called Acrylic Robotics. Our website is acrylicrobotics.ca. Uh, thank you so much, and I hope that in the next couple months, many of you start to put some of our paintings on your walls. Thanks.